Hello YouTube Divers, this is Water Diver 122 and I am back with another edition of episode 14 of Magic Metal Mondays. We are going to be we are going to be doing the third part of the Albums of the Year saga. This time we are going to be looking at my favorite albums from the 1990s. So, without further ado, let's get started. Coming in for 1990, no surprise, Rust in Peace by Megadeth. So many classic songs on here. Dave Mustaine is at his best vocal-wise, in my opinion. Um, this was the first album to feature uh, Marty Freeman and Nick Menza on the drums and guitar, respectively. Dave Ellison, of course, on the bass. Um, this has the best songwriting, the best instrumentation, the best performances. Best vocal lines by Mustaine, as I have already said. And some of Megadeth's best songs, like Holy Wars, um, Hangar 18, Rust in Peace Polaris, Tornado of Souls, and Lucretia. Those are my top five from this album, for sure. Um, 1990, and this album beat out some pretty darn good albums, like uh, Seasons in the Abyss by Slayer. You also had uh, Cowboys from Hell by Pantera, Facelift from Alice in Chains, Twisted Into Form by uh, Forbidden, and a TYR by Black Sabbath, although that's one I don't really care about. <coughs> Excuse me. So with that all being said, oh yeah, and of course Persistence of Time by Anthrax. So, so that said, Rust in Peace by Megadeth, coming here for 1990. 1991, we are going with Out of Time by R.E.M., and this beat albums like um, The Black Album by Metallica, Pink Bubbles Go Ape by Halloween. Um, just all these great albums. But with that, but with that being said, um, R.E.M. is one of my favorite bands, and this is my favorite album from them. And this is my favorite, and this is my tenth favorite album of all time. So it has to take the 1991 spot. I love a lot of songs on here. Of course, Shiny Happy People is my favorite R.E.M. song of all time. Losing My Religion is a freaking classic. Um, Low is great. Endgame is a good instrumental. Um, Belong is also great. Near Wild Heaven, Country Feedback, Tex Arcana, Me and Honey. Pretty much every single song of this record except for the uh, radio song featuring KRS-One. Mainly because it has hip-hop on it. I'm not, I don't really like hip-hop that much. So... Yeah, I don't like radio song, but everything else on this album is freaking amazing. And it's very odd, and it's a very weird listen, but I can't help but love it. So, with that said, let's move on to 1992. 1992, we are going with Dirt by in Chains. Holy jeez, this album is freaking amazing. I mean... From the one-two punch that opens up this album with uh, Them Bones and Damn That River, two of Alice in Chains' most heaviest songs. Um, and then couple that up with the song Wood, Angry Chair, and Rooster, and of course my favorite song on here, Down in a Hole. That's pretty much six out of the, what, 12 songs that are on this album that are freaking classics. And I also enjoyed the song, uh, the title track as well, I believe. If I didn't already mention that already. Um, but this album freaking kills it. There is not a dull moment on this record. And this beat out some pretty good albums from 1992, like Automatic for the People by R.E.M. It beat uh, Countdown to Extinction by Megadeth. And it also beat... A Vulgar Display of Power by Pantera. And I think Bad Motorfinger by Sound Soundgarden was off of the was from this year. I, I don't really remember. But regardless, this album Dirt by Allison Chains freaking smokes and it takes the nineteen ninety two spot. So let's move on. Nineteen ninety three In Utero by Nirvana. Yes, Nirv now I am personally a Nevermind guy, but with that being said, this 
but however, In Utero is a very close second. I really like this album a lot. Um, All Apologies, Heart Shaped Box. Two amazing songs. Can this beat out albums like um, Chameleon by Halloween, which is an album I really enjoy, um, and Counterparts by Rush, so freaking heavy. But for me, In Utero is basically the only album that is on this list, if you will, that combines, that is like the best marriage between Nirvana's softer side and their more grungier side, and they mash them together, and it works, especially on songs like Heart Shaped Box. Um, with that all being said, this album is a really good album, and sadly, this is the final album before Kurt Cobain died, um, a year or so later. Um, so with that all being said, this album lies here for 1993. So, let's move on. 1994, we are going with Super Unknown by Soundgarden. And this beat out a plethora of great albums like Divine, Inter Divine Intervention by Slayer. It also beat uh, Dookie by Green Day, uh, Far Beyond Driven by Pantera. All these great albums. Um, but sound, but Chris Cor Chris Cornell sounds freaking amazing on this album. And um, especially with that one-two punch of Black Hole Sun and Spoon Man, my top two favorite uh, Soundgarden songs. I love the title track. I love Fell on Black Days. And I love My Wave. Freaking amazing. I love this album. And it will take the 1994 spot. So, let's move on, shall we? 1995, we are talking about Insomniac by Green Day. Now, if I were a death metal fan, or a black metal fan, or things like that, um, then I would probably have a bunch of albums to choose from. But, I'm not into that type of metal. Um, but, Green Day is... Of course, one of my favorite bands, so got to put an album of theirs here in 1995. And there are two amazing songs off of this record, Geek Stink Breath and um, Brain Stew. Brain Stew is personally my favorite song off this album, and it's one of my top ten favorite uh, Green Day songs of all time. <coughs> I absolutely love this album. Um, yeah, I think it's a step... It's a little bit of a step down from Dookie, but it does, it's a nice little follow-up. Um, it's probably my, it's probably ranked number three in my Green Day album rankings. I haven't done a Green Day album rankings yet, but I probably will soon, so stay tuned for that. So with that said, Insomniac by Green Day coming in for 1995. 1996, this one might be controversial. Um, we are going with Load by Metallica. Now, yeah, yeah, before you all start blabbering me in the comments and are going to be like, oh, what did, I, what did you put uh, Load on here? It should be here. Well, for one thing, 1996 was not really a strong year for metal to me. Um, it was a strong year for genres like death metal or black metal or doom metal. But as I said... When I was talking about Insomniac, I'm not really into that type of stuff. I'm more into the melodic parts of metal, like power metal or melodic thrash metal, or even, heck, melodic death metal. Who knows? Um, so, Load on here, I absolutely, I really, for some reason, I really like radio-friendly metal albums. Um, but sometimes not all of them work. But for me... This album works. I mean, for one thing, the first song, which is a song I heard on the radio yesterday, freaking, it's freaking killer. Um, House That Jack Built's also good. Until It Sleeps is my favorite song on the album, and it's one of my top five favorite Metallica songs. King Nothing is also a great tune. Outlaw Torn, Bleeding Me, Cure, Thorn Within, Mama Said, Ronnie. All of them are standout tracks, to me at least. 
I know this album t tends to receive a lot of hate, but I put it higher than uh, Kill 'Em All on my Metallica album ranking, and I put it at number five on my Metallica album rankings. You can go check that out if you want to. Um, but this album freaking s smokes. It's underrated as heck. And I don't, and I really don't think that it des that it deserves to get the negativity that it gets. So it's so with that load by Metallica coming in for my 1996 spot being albums like Test for Echo by Rush, Reinventing the Steel. No, not Reinventing the Steel. Uh, Great Southern Trend Kill, I believe. Well, some Pantera album, and uh, Time of the Oath by Halloween. So that said, let's move on. <coughs> 1997, Glory of the Brave by Hammerfall. Now, Hammerfall is this power metal band from Sweden that does like a lot of stories about warriors and fairy tales, kind of like what Blind Guardian, kind of like a lot of Blind Guardian stuff. Um, so, but this album is just, what a freaking debut. Um... First off, it has the freaking song that is The Dragon Lies Bleeding. I absolutely love that song. It's, it's by far my favorite Hammerfall song. And Hammerfall is one of those bands that I want to get into because they are going to be touring with Halloween on their big uh, European, on their big Europe tour um, next year. So I kind of kind of have to get into Hammerfall. And I really like power metal. So... Hammerfall is going to be one of those bands that will I will hopefully grow into. I need to hear more of their discography, but for right now, this is the album that is so far my favorite from them. So, Glory to the Brave by Hammerfall it beats out albums like Reload by Metallica, which I almost put here. Um, I'm not going to lie. Um, so, with that, so, with that being said, Hammerfall, you know, Glory to the Brave by Hammerfall. Coming here from 1997. 1998, Better Than Raw by Halloween. And I know famously, I know famously on my Halloween album rankings, I put this one at number 10. But this album is such a freaking w different album. It's different. It's weird. It's more doomier. I really love this album. The stretch of songs between Push and um, I Can are freaking amazing. And I have wished I had put this album higher on my Halloween album rankings. This this album is just amazing. Everything from the heavier, more pow powerful side of Don't Spit On My Mind to the more suspenseful intro of the song Time to the rocking classic of I Can. This... This album is underrated. It's so weird, and, you know, it's so weird. It's so different compared to everything that Halloween did. Um, and it's way overlooked. Um, give this album a listen. It's a really good album. And it takes the 1998 spot, beating albums like Up by R.E.M. And, um, uh, Nightfall Middle Earth by Blind Guardian. So, with that said... Let's move on to 1999. 1999. Californication by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Now, this was one of those albums that I actually had no idea came out in 1999. I thought this album came out, like, in 1997 or something like that. But no, this album was a 1999 album. So for that, it easily takes this. Because, for one thing, it has my favorite uh, Chili Peppers song of all time, Other Side. I absolutely love that song by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Um, the title track is also great. And yeah, I know a lot of Chili Peppers fans would prefer uh, Blood, Sex, Sugar, Magic. I, that's the album. I believe that's the name of the album. I could see why it has Under the Bridge. It has all these classic songs. But for me, Californication takes, is for, for now, my favorite Red Hot Chili Peppers album. And it will... It's my favorite album from 1999. So, with that said, that concludes part three of my Albums of the Year saga, where I 
talk about my favorite albums between 1970 and the year of my birth, 2005. So, in part four, we will be discussing my favorite albums between 2000 and 2005, basically the early 2000s. So with that all being said, thank you so much for watching my fellow YouTube divers. This is Waterdive122 signing out, ready to dive into more fun on YouTube. Thanks for watching.